Jeez Louise, it's been, this has been like a face skin for me every time we try to take a tank. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, one and all, to the show, the great Robbie Calvo. Hey guys, thank you. Uh, so this is an awesome track, by the way. Thank you, yeah, appreciate it. Wicked Licks. Thank you. And I tried to do my bag and I threw my bag out the window <laughs> on like the 12th take. I'm like, no, nah, you got it. <laughs> so. Oh, you sounded awesome. We're going to have Robbie show us what to do on this because you've got a lot of options, which is really cool. But before yeah. we start, make sure to sign up for his channel. We'll leave a link down below. And also, if you're new here, welcome. Make sure to subscribe, click the bell to be notified, and always check in the description box below. There's free courses. There is something I almost forgot. And how on earth did I forget? We're doing a course. No, I didn't forget that part. But uh, <laughs> we've got some Line 6 giveaways. Check the link below. Like awesome giveaways really good so ones, make guys, sure yeah. you check that out down below it has to do with the helix stuff maybe stomp i don't know you have to check it out anyways yeah. so um this track we got a cool awesome chords we, we do and the thing about the the track i mean i like to put these tracks together yeah. that they're fun to jam over right but they have a purpose too yeah. so i never do anything that's just random everything's right. put together to help you guys learn. So what we've got here, guys, is a really cool track in the key of G, but the resolution point, the tonal center is D, so it's D mixolydian. Don't let any of that stuff freak you out. I'm yeah. gonna kind of guide you through that in a second. But the thing about this, the course that we're working on that this, this um, jam track comes from is called Money Tones. Now the Money Tones are the extensions that we often encounter in our chords. Right. And we go, oh, yeah, I can play my triad stuff over there, or I can play my scales over it. But quite often, guitar players negate to target those tones yeah. as, you know, really sweet notes, right? right. Anyone who's followed my works on sweet notes understands that chord tones are the strongest tones you can hit. If you put an extension in a chord, it becomes a sweet note, okay. a resolution point. So I target those tones. Right. So this whole course is about making you sound amazing quickly yeah. just by understanding you can target these yes. tones. Yes! So, um, well, give them, give them a solid example. So if I were to yeah. play this chord. Okay. Okay, so to explain that, guys, Brett's playing a C shape two frets higher, yep. and we still have the open G string. Yeah. Okay, so you can hear that. And it's giving a really nice rub against the major third, right? Because it's not a sus chord, it's a major chord with an add four, not a sus four. So you've got the three and the four in the chord, Ooh, yeah. which gives it that really nice mysterious. Well, show them what you were showing me earlier. Like you naturally, you'd want to go to like the third of the D. Like right. Show them the, the money too. Well, yeah. So I'll, I'll go around the chords, guys, and then I'm going to start showing you where all this oh. stuff is, right? So that's the, the first chord. And then it goes to E minor, to a C5-2 with the sharp 11, to a G5, to D with an F sharp bass. Now there's common tones to all of that. We've got that G and the D there. We've got the G and the F sharp in both of the chords. Mm -hmm. When I go here, I've got the G and the F sharp here as well. That's cool. Here. And then you have, you know, the F sharp in this chord. So my money tone is my add four, that D tone. Okay. And it's probably a tone you wouldn't go to normally, but because it's in there, you go, oh my God. And it actually sounds stronger than the major third for a little while. So, so it's D that you're, is your money tone? No, my money tone is G. Oh, okay. You said D. So oh, it's G. It's yes, G is the money tone. Okay. So let me just show you. So here, I could play any of my triad tones over the D, couldn't yeah, I? Yeah, let me play it. Yeah. So I've got, you know. Right, so I can hit any of those over that chord. But what about if I do this? I'm going to go to the G instead. Isn't that nice? So what you're doing is you're hitting the money tone, which is different from what you'd usually hear. It sounds solid. And then when you go to the third as well, you go, oh my God, there's a mysterious note. And yeah. it's not really, it's yeah. the chord tone. Right. So what I'm doing is targeting those tones specifically to make you sound different. Okay. Not wrong, different yeah. Yeah. and better. Yeah. Right. So the whole... That's nice of you. 
<laughs> well, no, and, and the whole idea about the course is it's sweet notes on steroids. Yeah. You're now doing chord tone extensions. And what, what I've been showing Brett as we work through the course and through these interviews is that instead of saying, okay, I'm going to target that and I'm going to play my same runs, what I've been saying is find a little contour within a scale shape you like, mm -hmm. right? So in this case, we could use there's various options. But you then develop that little motif phrase into a larger solo kind of idea. Okay. Should we do it? And I'll, what I'll do, yeah. guys, is I'm going to target that, you know, money tone, the G, over our D add four that's got that G in it. And I'm going to develop the line into a longer line. Okay. Can okay. we just play the chord progression? Yes, please, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing there, guys, is I'm taking my time, I'm building momentum, mm -hmm. playing melodies that then I can take off on a tangent and add other things to. And when you target those things, I think what it says to the listener is, whether that's someone in a bar or whether it's you know on a record, is, okay, there's something interesting happening here and you're setting them up for a melody, not just burning faces mm -hmm. with you know ideas. So what I'm doing is taking my time to develop those motifs. Okay. Yeah. How, how are you making that that motif? Like, what what are you okay. using, or are you targeting chord shapes, or what's the? Well, and that's another thing that we've been looking at is shapes within shapes. It's one of my big kind of concept things. Now we've all got we can all see our chord shapes in the scales. Mm -hmm. I can see shapes within well, those. And if you can't, then that's where you need to start. It's key. Yeah. Yeah, and we can do that. We'll break it down a little bit. So what I'm doing, guys, is we're in the key of G, but our tonal center is the D chord, so it's a D mixolydian. So you can play the G major scale or E minor pentatonic, G major pentatonic, mm -hmm. but what you want to be doing is targeting specific tones. So what I can do here on the fretboard, for example, is I can see the shapes of G, right? I can see this G, mm -hmm. this G, I can also see my D note here. Okay. So a great place to start might be E minor, G major pentatonic, right? So mm -hmm. you could be, if this is G. Now, do you use okay. that shape more as a G arpeggio shape to d develop the lead kind of lines to it? Because it doesn't necessarily sound like you know, uh, E minor pentatonic when you do it. No, it doesn't because I'm really targeting the D tones and the G rather mm -hmm. than it being E. So you think from the other place, guys, instead of thinking from the root of E minor pentatonic, mm -hmm. it's G major pentatonic. Yeah. And if you think in those terms, you're almost reversing your phrases. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, totally it does. And what we were talking about earlier was I would take something like the triad of the G here and pull off, you know, kind of things like this. Let me, let me play that so yeah. the, the chord behind okay. so they hear it. Yeah. And then since so there's an E minor. Yeah. And the C's right there too. G. Back to D. So what you're doing is you're using your ear, you can repeat the licks, you can repeat the motifs, but did you notice I'm like, oh, I'm going to tailor it there. Yeah. I'm not just repeating the idea and going, right. I hope this works. Yeah. I'm using my ear. Let's do that again. Guys, follow what I'm doing because I'm going to start with an idea. I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to tailor it to the chord change. Okay. And that's kind of what you've got to do. You've got to start using your ear. Yeah. You can use the same tool, right. the fragments within it, go to certain tones, obviously, yeah, money tones and stuff like that, but use your ear to then get to the next place. So yeah. I'll develop it as so you So I mean, just slow, slow chords? Yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay. <laughs>
you know what I love is it doesn't sound like pentatonic playing or or anything. It's like you're using a pentatonic shape per se, right? But it doesn't sound like it. No, and I think that's the key. So I think how I determined why that is when I was you know starting to play. I never copied Jimmy Page and mm -hmm. all the guys. Maybe I should have done. I've got, I would have got some great ideas. But I never really wanted to sound like anyone else. Mm -hmm. So I got inspiration by listening to Zeppelin and yeah. Rush and those those sure. guys. But I went in search of my ideas. Yeah. And what I decided was, there's melodies here that I can create from my own sensibilities. Right. Um, if I started copying all the other other guys there would be a lot of those influences in there. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that, right. but I wanted to be absolutely just me. And I think that's where I went on the path of, dis you know, searching for discovery and, you know, new frontiers open up with new shapes. Yeah. And then I think listening and going, what do I want to sound like? Mm -hmm. And so that, that incorporates the guitar, the, the gear, the, you know, the delays I use and the note choices. And, I'm going to say choices again because just because you've got a scale type and you've been told it works, yeah. you have choices what you do with it. Yep. And what I see a lot of guys do is they've been given this framework and they play through the framework. <laughs> right. <laughs> They're not finding shapes and ideas yeah. within the framework. Yep. So during the courses, guys, the two that we filmed this week, I'm saying look for little shapes within the shapes. Yeah, well, and again, like if you notice, you know, if you took that one spot, Right. And you thought about, you know, you're playing that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you could take, you know, three notes, right? And it, when that, the E minor. Yeah. 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 You can hear where it needs to yeah, go. Yeah, and that's just, and that's the thing. Like, if yeah. you just thought about it, like, you, right. you don't get that. And, no. I, and I think when, when you really drive home is the little pieces inside, the, you know, the shapes within the shapes. But when, when you're talking about shape, I mean, that shape could be a little triangle. It could. You know, and it's everything you need because you got D. Yeah. Yeah. You got your E minor. You got your C. Yeah. yeah. G. <laughs> <laughs> You're basically arpeggiating all of the changes yeah. right there. But you don't have to do all no. of the notes. You can pick the ones that you want, right? Well, and like you were saying, some of them work throughout the, the change. They're, you know? they're common threads. Yeah. So like we saw on the first three chords, we've got the G in all three of those chords. Mm -hmm. So why not hit that? That's <laughs> yeah. the money tone, right? And of course, that F sharp is super sweet on this. Mm -hmm. But I think setting it up with the fourth, that add four, yeah. is like... Oh, you're not giving away the thing. Let me do this. I'm going to go to the G and not give away the F sharp. Okay. And then on my second time, I'm going to give away the F sharp. Okay. Let me do it more, more normal speed. Okay. It is, and it's it's the chords are giving me a feel and a mood, and that's another thing that I really try to advocate to my students. What's the music evoking to you? What's it make you feel? And that could be any number of things. On this track, it makes me feel kind of reflective. Yeah. There's this almost like movie soundtrack kind of vibe yeah. going on with it. It's definitely not a car ad. Right. Right. It's yeah. not that kind of thing. It, it's got a, a movie soundtrack kind of thing to it. So how would then I evoke that feeling even further right. with the melody? Okay. And I think that's what's happening. We've kind of got this ad four thing. We're going, oh, that's different. Mm -hmm. And then you pay it off with the major third the next time you go, what? Yeah. <laughs> that's what I felt. Yeah. And it actually gives me tingles when yeah. I'm doing it. Yeah. That's a good sign. Uh, well, yeah, right. And that's not always the case, as we know, guys, right? 
sometimes better you, than shingles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know we, we're not going to play perfectly all the time, no. but this puts you in a good place to start. Yeah, and if you start from there and develop the lines, you'll start to develop a melodic sensibility and go. Oh, now I understand why this works. Yeah, so let's let's do this because I know a lot of people here are, are pentatonic bass players. Mm. So if I were to play, um, if you played the chords and I just yep. played like pentatonic licks, what's the the way that we can start to break out of that, right? So if I'm like sitting here doing my normal I, bag. I'm gonna yeah. give you a bunch of options, yeah, guys, so hang right? tight. Right? Okay. Right. right, so that's like maybe my, yep. would be my go-to, right? Right, so E minor, G major, pentatonic. Is that what you're yeah. thinking? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. D, right. D major, yeah, yeah. Okay. D major pentatonic, right? Oh, you're playing D major pentatonic. That'll work until you get into the next. Yeah, exactly. Part. And that's where I was fumbling in the one part. I'm okay. like, wait a minute, hold on. All right. Yeah, okay, yeah. so we're in the key of G. So G major pentatonic, mm -hmm. E minor pentatonic would be perfect, right? But what we did earlier was we could say, all right, we're going to play E minor, G major pentatonic. Well, I see what you're saying. Right, so G major would have been like. Beautiful. Yeah, right. I get it. Right. That's right. money. Yeah. Right. That, no, that's, no, no, that's, totally. that's what's happening now. But we That's don't... funny, but that's just a simple shift of thinking. You know what I mean? It really is. My default would have been. But then it, right. when you concentrate on the G major. Right, yeah. you concentrate it here. Yeah, so our tonal center is that yeah. D add four, but let's reverse engineer it. Let's okay. consider that might be a G chord. Oh. Right, okay, so we've got the root it's in there. It might enough, just be right? inverted, right? Yeah. So let's, G's the root, mm -hmm. okay? D's the fifth. Okay. F sharp's the major seven. Oh, We've got a G major seven chord. Yeah. Without the third. We can haven't you got do the G B. major arpeggios? Yeah, you can. <sighs> yes! <laughs> right. So guys, um, I'm going to play a G major seven arpeggio and a C major seven arpeggio over the, the chord changes. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's going to work because that's the one chord and the four chord in the key of G. Everything we've got is in the key of G. However, we're resolving to the tonal center of D, so mixolydian. So you would do a G major seven arpeggio resolving to D. Well, tones of D. Tones so it could be the F sharp, it could be the D, it could be... Not but, tones of D, it, but tones of D. Tones of D. <laughs> and the G will work too because we've got the add four. Okay, well, shoot. So the B note is the only one that's going to sound weak against the D. The B note, the okay. B. And we can prove that, we can do it and yeah. hear a clanger if you want. Right, I did that plenty of times <laughs> in, our, in our first takes. All right, you ready? Yeah, <laughs> and just real slow. <laughs> So this would be a G major seven shape, chord shape. So I'm outlining that on right, the fretboard. So. Yeah, okay. so you've got your G triad here, guys, mm -hmm. but then I'm getting the, got it. the major seven here. And then if I move that up to, the, to C, so mm -hmm. we've got a C major. So we've got the one chord and the four chord. So what I'm doing is basically sliding in from the major seven. Break that down. That's too okay. good to be true. <laughs> One of my fave licks. All right. So I can slide in and ascend through it in arpeggiation mm -hmm. fashion, right? So. And One more time, Russell. Fifth, yeah. So. Now, if I mimic the same thing here. I actually end on the G there yeah. too, don't I? So yeah. that's a good one, but it's giving you the same rhythmic motif, but you're getting different notes because mm -hmm. you've moved it. 
You guys probably also saw that I did a similar thing in my intro solo where I took um, this kind of idea. <laughs> Then I moved up to the 12th fret and mm -hmm. did exactly the same. Now, why does that work in the 12th spot? Well, that would be the E, um, that would be the E Aeolian shape. It's really just G major, right? It's the mm -hmm. G major scale, but at the 12th fret. Now, shapes within shapes, I'm gonna reiterate this because it's so important. It's what I think some guys are missing. I can see this shape mm -hmm. in this pattern. I can also see it in this pattern. So all I'm doing is shifting the idea and the shape. Is that based off like of a, a C arpeggio? So yeah, you could look at it like this. Okay. And I guess and here too. G. Yeah. All right. So yeah, that's basically what you've got. But I'm thinking this shape in kind of in particular yeah. is giving me that line. Now, you're not going to get that always because getting this note to this note, the fourth to the third, mm -hmm. here you're getting the fourth uh, to the third of, I'm getting the fourth to the third of the D, mm -hmm. the fourth to the third of the G here. Okay. So that semitone is working mm -hmm. from the key of G. So it's those kind of things I'm looking for is to say, okay, I've got an idea. I like the idea. I'm going to reuse it, repackage it. Mm -hmm. Oh, and can I move it too? Yeah. And get different modes. Right. So I'm seeing that stuff kind of all over the fretboard. Yeah. And it shapes within shapes. Um, give you another idea. One of the things that I was doing as well on the fretboard was taking my G shape here, mm -hmm. going from the major third to the fourth of mm -hmm. the G. So kind of sliding into oh, my into G the, triad yep, here, uh -huh. right? So you've seen this. And then when I go up here, I'm seeing this that G. G triad from this, so I can do this. Oh, that's so cool. Oh my gosh. And even things like. <laughs> right? So all I'm doing is doing diatonic sixths. Yeah. Um, you know, as an intervallic lines. So instead of playing them as double stop, I'm separating the notes, right? Yeah. Now, when you started showing me those arpeggio shapes, you started mixing them with chromatic. So it didn't sound like, yeah. you know, because I think that's a, the, the problem with arpeggios for a lot of people is it becomes another shape that they just play straight up and down, you know, and yeah. they don't learn how to properly, I shouldn't say properly because, you know, there's no right or wrong, but like right. musically, modify it to where it doesn't sound like you're just running scales. Yeah, so shall I do that on the fretboard a little <laughs> of bit? Of course, yeah. that's why we're here, brother. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so guys, think about it this way. If you've got an arpeggio, typically you're gonna find that the arpeggio will give you one note on one of the strings, which makes it awkward mm -hmm. to finger, right? So our pentatonic shapes give us two notes per string, don't yeah. they, in every occasion. So what I did was I took, say, an arpeggio shape for example, like this of a, a D7, if you like. There's my one note on that string. Mm -hmm. See how awkward that yeah, can be? Weird. So, so what I did was added the nine. So there's my D, add the nine to it or the two, mm -hmm. right? So now I can do things like this. Okay, see, but that that other stuff right there that you like right. sauced it up with. <laughs> all right, so what I did was, guys, if you understand that an arpeggio contains all the chord tones, which means every note is a resolution point. Mm -hmm. If you know that, you're solid, right? Mm -hmm. Every note you hit will resolve over the given chord. If then you connect those with chromatics, you get more movement, some more flavor. Mm -hmm. Plus you're getting... Um, some outside tonality that sounds interesting, but because you keep resolving to chord tones, mm -hmm. all you're doing is connecting chord tones with chromatics. So I'll, I'll play a couple of those kind of things. So if I start here, guys. Right, you want chords in the background or you're just gonna? Yeah, you could play just a, like a D chord, that D chord, and okay. I'll... Um... Right. 
like so. What was that? That's super cool. So, um, right. So you're playing the, the D right here? Yeah. Is that where you're... What's the whole shape? So the whole shape, if you if you played through it as a typical arpeggio thing. Let's qualify that. Oh, okay. One, three, right? So five, flat seven. Oh yeah, you're going down the D here. Exactly. Ah, so, so that's kind of based off of like a... Yeah, but we, yeah. yeah, like a G shape, yeah, okay. right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. But what we're doing is putting the flat seven in because this is mixolydian, guys. It's okay. off the five chord. Right. Although we haven't got that flat seven in this, doesn't mm -hmm. make it any less mixolydian. Right. And this is where guys get hung up, right? Mm -hmm. They go, well, it's not in the chord. It doesn't have to be. It's still a mixolydian progression. Yeah. It's going to the five chord. Yeah. I can then still flavor this mixolydian. And I think I did a run in the solo at the front. Actually, if you would, play me that D chord again. I'm going to place like a mixolydian, uh, um, a D9 arpeggio run, okay, okay. over this. Right. <laughs> that sounds amazing. You want the whole chord progression? Yeah, you could do that. And I'll... <laughs> So what I can do, guys, is I can play when the D the D add four is going on. I can play my arpeggios over that and kind of keep it super simple, mm -hmm. and then go on a, a run through that arpeggio as the chords change. Okay. And what happens there is because I'm not resolving or stopping, it'll sound really kind of unique as the chords change underneath it. Yeah. As long as I take it home. So what I do a lot is color that chord, which is my, you know, tonal center chord, and then, you know, play through the other things. So should we do that a sec? Yeah, um, we should. So I'm going to keep it simple on the first chord and play runs on the, oh, okay. the other chords. The other chords, okay. all right. Yeah. <laughs> So it's resolving and outlining the D chord, mm -hmm. taking you on a journey through the others where it's not resolving. So you can mix up minor pentatonic, major pentatonic, uh, G major scale, D mixolydian, and the arpeggios. So we've got a lot of choices. Wow. Plus, if we really target that money tone, you're going to sound different too. Yeah. All right. So that's the key to this really is that you know, there's a lot of information here. We can choose the tools we want, but how are we going to find our contours and our little motifs in and around that information? God, that's so. amazing. <laughs> you want to show them some more? You had yeah. some saucy licks earlier. What were the saucy licks? The saucy licks? Yeah, there was I a I just like hearing you say saucy. Saucy, darling. <laughs> All right, so um, tell you what, what, why don't I do this? Why don't I mix up all of those things that we just said? So... I'm going to play uh, minor pentatonic, D minor pentatonic uh, first time round, and obviously not do that on the other chords. You can get away with it on the first chord. Uh, arpeggios, major, G major scale, so D mixolydian stuff. So I kind of mix up a little bit. I'm going to give us a track for this one because it'll be so good. <laughs> Let's see if I can get it to work. So my D minor pentatonic first.
<laughs> You're my hero. <laughs> That is so good. Like I would take those kind of licks over speed any day. Uh, yeah, and I think the journey that I went on, I've never been able to play fast. Okay. And I really admire, I mean, you tear it up frighteningly sometimes, right? And most of the guys that I know, Corey and Jeff and those guys, they can all really tear it oh, up yeah. and be tasteful. Barn burners. Uh, yeah, and I've never had that facility, you mm -hmm. know, speed wise. So what I looked for was those melodic contour hooks contours and how could i make it sound like it was fast without it really being fast fluid, I, fluid. and mm -hmm. i think that's the key is if you have fluidity don't give it all away on the first lick because yeah. if you do you've got nowhere to go yeah so you probably notice this about me is that i'll start with a simple phrase pocket the notes and then my crescendo line might be the yeah the run yeah should we do that <laughs> So what I'm going to do, guys, is um, an eight bar solo, or it might end up being 16, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of do a motif based idea, pocket the ideas first, and then do the run to end the solo. We'll pretend it was uh, the 80s and we'll give you 16. Not wow. today, we'll give you three and a half. Big hair. All right, there we go. <laughs> Leave your aqua net at home, folks. <laughs> So I'm creating melodies on the first three and then that last one I knew I wanted to take, mm -hmm. you know, have a crescendo line that was maybe a bit faster. So thinking in terms of quarter notes, eighth notes, maybe even triplets sometimes. And on the last one, it goes to sixteenths, yeah. right? It's that, that line. And again, the tempo of this track isn't too unmanageable, right? I think it's about 96 BPM. Most of us can get by on that kind mm -hmm. of tempo. If this track was at 120, you wouldn't see me playing 16. Yikes. We can't Corey. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, you know, and guy, certain guys have that facility, yeah. right? Know how to make that work. I can't. So what I do is I make it fluid, tasteful, hopefully, and, you know, give and you something interesting. Other guys that shan't play that fast. You shouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? If you are flubbing notes, when you try and play fast, you really have to slow down because speed is a by byproduct of accuracy. Yeah, for sure. Right, if you're not playing accurately, it's always gonna sound sloppy. And, um, you know, if you can get these notes in the pocket, you saw me on the in intro part to that. Mm -hmm. I didn't even play on the first part of the chords. Yeah. Right, I, was, I hung back there. Actually, let's do that. Um, I'm gonna play a simple idea, guys, and I'm gonna move it across the beat. Okay. Right, I'm going to show you how you, you me to play could then the rephrase. Just mellow, you and me? Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. It's hard not to pay attention to what you're doing. I'm like, what's he doing? And there's a skis calling. Oh, no, it's flying all over the place. Well, the other thing, that, that thing that I just did there, you could let that sing out across the whole two bars. Yeah. Actually, let's do that. Would okay. you mind? Yeah, so, no, I wouldn't. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Oh, 
awesome. You, you don't always have to be moving. And I think one of the things that I think about when we're at work, right? Our boss wants to see us moving around and the wheelbarrow wheel squeaking, right? Mm -hmm. And if it's not going, ee, 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 yeah. you're not working hard. You're fired! Right? <laughs> Same thing with guitar players. It's like, oh, it's your solo. So it's almost like we've got to be seen to be doing something. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we just don't. <laughs> Sometimes. Well, you know, the interesting thing, too, is, you know, especially if we don't play much, there's that fear of it's like being on the radio and there's nothing being said. But it actually mm -hmm. makes you appear more confident if you're willing to, like, sit back a little bit and be OK. Like, yeah, you know, it seems like you're you'd have you have more experience. You're not seem like you're rushing into something. And I have to remind myself of that sometimes at my gigs. I, you know, I'm, I've sung through my song and at the end of it, I'm looping the chorus. Mm -hmm. So then once I've looped it, I'm thinking, I've got to jump in mm -hmm. right as soon as the loop's done. And I go, chill. Yeah. Go have a bit of your tea if yeah, you want. Yeah, well, well, you're in Hawaii too. You got palm <laughs> trees behind you. Probably somebody like some fire. He's just like, hold on a second. That's Hi, right. Just, just chill out, dude. But anyway, so I think that's it. It's just knowing, okay, I got this. And I think the, the audience appreciates that it's not all being like thrown in their yeah. face. And... Uh, so that's kind of my approach anyways, just pocket the notes, pick the right notes. And if you need to do a flourish, you do that flourish yeah. maybe at the end, not at the beginning. Right. The other thing I think, um, you know, to impart to you guys, let's say that money tone is really working for you. There are things that you can do where you can use that as it's a pedal tone, right? So. Mm. Yeah. So can I try that against the chord? Yeah, here we go, ready? Yeah. Two, three, four. those kind of things so it's semi-chordal and those are really nice kind of things that you can that could even just be your solo yeah right it doesn't have to be you know pyrotechnics so think in terms of that guys when you're playing and hopefully you'll pick up the course with all these tracks in there and you can really obviously i'm going to show you all the ideas that really make this sound special and, and fantastic and I think what you're going to find is maybe there's a new appreciation for slowing down, mm -hmm. finding the good stuff. Yeah. Right. No, nope, for uh, sure. Yeah. Um, I think that's where the power lies. And then if you go, oh, I can mix minor dominant arpeggios, the G major scale, focusing on the D. You've got a lot of tools that then you can find those little motifs and shapes within shapes. Yeah. We've got seven major scale shapes, right? Get to We've work it out for you. Yeah. So you've got a lot of tools. What you've got to do then is find the ideas in the tools. <sighs> so good. <laughs> By the way, everybody, he's playing through the Helix. Yeah. So the Line 6 stuff that we're going to be giving away, uh, I'm not sure if it's on this one or the next one, but they will all basically have either Helix software, which is basically that on the computer, right? Yeah. So guys, I've got the Helix floor unit. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's the full blown one with the scribble strips. What we're going to do is give away one of these. We're also going to give away 10 of the Helix Native, which is Helix software mm -hmm. that goes in your computer. So you can still play through a Helix, a full-blown Helix, without the hardware. So I think we're going to give a Helix and five of those away with one of the courses and five with the other course of the Natives. So if you don't ever travel anywhere or go yeah. to gigs, Native is all you it need. It sounds so good. Well, and the cool thing is you can still, if you have like your favorite drive pedal or whatever, you can put it right in the front of it. Like I see a lot of guys around town oh, yeah. uh, either using the Stomp or especially like fly dates, you know, they just want like yeah. a tiny little rig. And it's like, I can't tell you how many people I've seen at Exact Tone Solutions that have a Stomp and like three other pedals. And that's their, I mean, and they're playing or work Stadiums. playing yeah giant places and it's like it's just mm -hmm. easy i can put that above my head in the plane and go you know, 
The, the sound guys love you too, because all you do, like for me, I'm running two XLRs out to when I'm playing in Hawaii. I've got my <laughs> vocals going through here in stereo. Yeah. Got my percussion loops and my guitar all in stereo running to my Yamaha. No way, that's crazy. Stage so you're, you got everything. like uh, effects on your vocals and stuff through the... Everything. That's my, crazy. I've, my vocals have never sounded so good than through here. I've got a whole... Se Here's the thing about Helix, guys. You've got two separate... Um, channels if you like so signal path so you've got the top signal path that can be your guitar how i have it set up here is that's my guitar the second uh, channel you know i've got set up for vocals so i've got um, a discrete microphone class a input with an xlr i've got it all set up for vocals and that can even go to its separate outputs so for example i could run my guitar in stereo with the xlrs out to front of house mm -hmm my vocals could go out of the quarter inch jacks to another two inputs so they can mix them separately even though I'm controlling it all here. Oh, that's crazy. For my gigs, I fade in to the song, which is really nice when yeah. you're eating dinner so you don't choke on your spoon, <laughs> right? <laughs> and when I'm finished, when I've done my looping, I start singing the backing vocals and finger pick over the part I've been playing. And I'm fading out as I'm doing all of that. Oh my God. And it God. just fades out to nothing. And it's just like, it, people say to me, God, that's super slick. And I go, well, this will do it for you. Yeah. This is really my hub for yeah. everything. I could do, I've done all my clinics, yeah. all my gigs, all my sessions, everything, all the teaching stuff we do in this, is in this unit. I've got seven set lists in here, guys. I've got my nylon string set list, my acoustic set list, my electric set list, my Yamaha stuff. It's just crazy. It's all in here and all the tempos are dialed. Yeah. All I have to do is hit the button to that patch. And you're, you run your iPod through it or your, your yeah. pad through it too. So what you can do, guys, um, I have my iPad's got stereo percussion loops. That's running into um, a block in here. They call them blocks, right? The effects blocks. It's a return block that goes in at the end of my signal chain. Mm -hmm. So my guitar is going in. I've got a block where that goes into it, right? And that goes in before the looper and the, the um, volume pedal. So I can record my loops, my percussion loops, my guitar, my vocals, all on the fly. And once I've recorded that, I just turn off the iPad. I hit the button because no all the percussion's then in here. Yeah. And then I'm looping over that. I can even overdub over it. And then when I'm done, I'm fading the loop, me playing and the vocals <laughs> all at once. That's crazy, man. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, when I say to people, guys, look, if you want a world-class rig, there's hundreds of amps, hundreds of pedals, all the effects yeah. that you could ever need in here. And how are you going to take yeah. amp heads, cabinets, and everything else on a plane? Yeah. I can go anywhere. And here's the other thing, guys. By spending a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, by spending a lot of money. But here's the <laughs> other thing. All of my presets and everything I can put on a, in a file on my desktop or in, in my phone or email to you. Oh, yeah. If you had Helix here or Native, mm -hmm. I wouldn't even just bring this. Yeah. We just load in my patches and we just call it up on your computer. That's crazy. And that's probably the next iteration for most traveling guitar players. Yeah. Their sound guy has probably got Helix Native on the computer. Yeah, on the computer. And he's running all their sounds and all the program changes via MIDI and they haven't got anything on the floor apart from oh. maybe a pedal. Right, Bliss. Pedal. Yeah. Then you can just concentrate on the show, your moves, do your duck walks, oh, your <laughs> Van Halen slides across the stage. Yeah, and you know what? And, and it, it's, it does streamline the stage, yeah. doesn't it? When you think about it, I've been thinking about a gig I've got to put together in Hawaii with a full band. And I've been talking to the bass player, have you got a great DI pedal? Mm -hmm. The keyboards can go direct. The mm -hmm. guitar can go direct. Yeah. There's no back line. Yeah. And we've got a great sound on stage. Oh, yeah. Right, all coming through a line array system. Right. That everyone can hear. Well, and there's no volume wars. No, no You know, it's all wars. like, you know, like, this is the mix. This, this is, is how we're doing this. That's right. <laughs> and if you have got solos, right, yeah. we, we can boost that. Or hopefully if you've got a sound guy, they can yeah. just give you a, a little a love. Yeah. yeah. So it's going that direction. Not that I don't love my tube amps, I do. Yeah. But I can't use them for gigs. It's practicality, you know what I mean? And 95% uh, of the people in the crowd are gonna have no idea that you're playing through 
But it doesn't suck, though, does it? No, it, it doesn't amazing. suck at all. And that's what I'm saying. I keep saying this over and over to, to people when they ask me, yeah. what boutique pedals or whatever I should buy? And I'm like, well, A, are you a pro, right? And, and it doesn't mean if, if you're not that you shouldn't buy right. gear. But if you're just somebody that wants to stay at home or, and maybe there's, you know, maybe you live in an apartment and you have a family and it's like you don't have room for Maybe you have room in the corner of your room for a guitar stand and then like you have a laptop and it's like the native software is killer for that. Or the, the, um, I got, Stomp. I just bought a couple of the stomps and they're amazing. They sound mm -hmm. so good. When I go to uh, Xactone Solutions, they, one of the guys there, Eric, is amazing at programming one of those things. And you hear him when you come in, you're like, dude, what are you playing through? He's like, oh, stomp. <laughs> it's just like, are you serious? Well, like, think, yeah. And you know, think about it. So you've got, Choices of your amps and everything else, you can dial that. Yeah. Plus it's stereo yeah, and all the stereo effects. If you do have a favorite pedal, like I've got my signature overdrive mm -hmm. here, right? I'm running that into the front end of yeah. Helix. You don't have to negate what you love. You can either put it in, there's yeah. four effects loops right. in here that you could actually have it running in, have it on all the time, yeah. switch in that effects loop oh. if you wanted to do it that yeah. way. So all your programs here. Or you just have it on the floor like, we love our stomps, right? Yeah. You, you saw me at the beginning of the thing. I hit that for my solo. Yep. It works seamlessly. Yeah. Everything works beautifully and seamlessly. And the stomp unit, now that you can get eight blocks in there instead, it was limited to six blocks. I can basically put, I'm looking at my blocks here, I could put my patch from Helix into stomp. And it would pretty much sound the same. Oh, because they have the bigger stomp now too. Well, they've got the biggest stomp, yeah. so XL, right? But also just the little stomp. Now you can get eight blocks really? in a signal chain. A little upgrade. Yeah. And it was a little limiting for guys yeah. that wanted that extra, yeah. you know, stuff. Now it's not limited. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, do yourself a favor before, you know, because it's easy these days and it's fun. I like, I, you know, boutique stuff and pedals and whatever. But there's plenty of guys. What's that guy's name? Jonathan Cordy, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, John Chris Nathan Buck, yeah. using like the that stuff. There's so many people. Just type in, you know, Line Six Stomp and listen to some of the tracks. Some people are able to, or sounds, I should say, able to come up with. And like he's saying too, you know, I have people right now developing uh, sound packs for me, and it's like you hear them, and it's like, hmm. wow, those sound good. I mean, it's just fun. Like you know, like yeah. sometimes you just. You don't want to go turn everything on. It's like you can put on headphones and just plug your guitar in and you're done. Well, here's the other thing that um, that I found really interesting about Stomp. I've got Stomp as well. And by the way, I've got patches for Stomp, Helix, Podgo, all on Marketplace in Line 6, plus on my website. So if you're not good at programming this stuff, which... Somebody a, else is. <laughs> we give you a start point, right? So yeah. you could put my patch in there go, oh, maybe too much gain or not enough. You tweak it from there. Yeah. I've given you the template yeah, right. for good tone. Yeah. Uh, the thing I loved about Stomp was, and I did a travel gig with that, and I took, you know, one of those little portable speaker things that mm -hmm. you can get, yeah. JBL or yeah. whatever it is. If you run a stereo cable out of that to the little eighth inch jack oh, in that, on, I had a rig in my hotel room that I could practice all my tracks and no jam to. So I've got this and that little speaker system yeah. in stereo. Oh, and it just sounded awesome, I bet. Just killer. Ugh. And then when I go to the gig or the session. That's a vacation rig too. It's right a vacation rig. Yeah. I mean, seriously. So you've got all that stuff oh, your in your Your wives are going to be so pissed. You're really going to bring that? <laughs> or you just put your headphones. Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Or you just put your headphones yeah. in. Because it's got headphone jacks. You've got headphones in here and you can vary the volumes of it. Awesome. It's it's the way to go. Yeah. I've been using Helix now for nearly five years, if not five years. And I've loved it and I've used it for everything yeah. since. Everyone always asks on the on the videos that we've done together, it's always been that. So whenever I've shot videos with him, it's always that. So we're going to leave a link for that contest down below. It's not a contest, but whatever you want to call it. Giveaway. Giveaway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then also check out, there'll probably be links to his course down there. I highly recommend his stuff. Like to me, when he's here, you know, I, I can move around on the fretboard and, and solo how I want, but there's a melodic piece I'm always searching for. And whenever you come here, I'm like, that's what it is. That's that <laughs> thing. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's uh, you know, a lot of, Players are really good at blues. They're really good at a lot of things, but 
There's not a lot of um, people out there that that show you how to use what you have and then break out into something new right. and retain everything that you already have and yeah. just make it better. You don't have to change anything. Yeah. All you have to do is go, that's a great concept. Yeah. I'll try it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right, so make sure you subscribe also to his channel. If you're new here, welcome again. Make sure you to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when the new channels come out. Again, check out the stuff in the description box below. All that information will be out there. Robbie, thank you, sir. Thank you, my friend. All thank right. Thank you, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next See time. See ya.